Greg Lobanov, welcome to the podcast, sir. Thank you. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations this- on Chicory. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's nice to see you again. It's been um, a long time. And this is my first time meeting Janet as well. Hi, Janet. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. So it was like GDC 2019. I know it, it feels like a bizarre lifetime ago, but I think, I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was GDC 2019, right? Where I really liked Wandersong and then reached out to you there? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we hung out for like a little bit there. I think that's the last GDC that's actually happened, which is yeah. crazy now to think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, there's a lot to unpack here, but that was a big thought I had. is like, boy, it feels like Wandersong didn't come out that long ago. And now Chicory, A Colorful Tale is out and uh, tearing up the charts, uh, Beloved, it's <laughs> reviewing like gangbusters. And it, it feels like this was a short turnaround for a game developer, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess relatively. I mean, we were working on it for- for about two and a half years. So it doesn't, and like, you know, like compared to a normal person, or I don't know a normal person, I guess normal people don't make video games. But <laughs> like, like in the span of a human lifetime, two and a half years is a long time to spend on one thing. Um, <laughs> that is true. That is That's more point. how I see it. But compared to other video games, yeah, for how, and for how big it is, it was a pretty fast turnaround. Yeah. Um, I've gotten, I'm, yeah, I've gotten pretty good at making games pretty fast, I think. Yeah, Basically. and and part of that is just the tech because you use what Game Maker Studio two. Uh, yep, I use Game Maker Studio. It's like the software I learned how to make games in when I was like twelve or whatever. Uh, and now I'm just it's like it really is kind of like breathing to me. Like I can just use that and and I can make stuff. And honestly, like if you look at Wander Song and Chicory, um, like there's a lot of reasons why like Game Maker might not nece- even necessarily like if you were starting from scratch, if you were learning today to make games. I don't know if I would necessarily recommend Game Maker for you to make those games, right? But it totally makes sense for me because, like, yeah, like learning anything new adds like a year to any project, and I don't have to learn anything new anymore. So I'm just sticking to that. (laughs) Are you worried about it being future proof? Because from the video editor side, like, I love Final Cut Pro, and I like clung on to it until Apple basically kicked me off the train. Uh, But like, are you? (laughs) Is it future proof, Game Maker Studio Two? Seems to be. I mean, we just got a PlayStation 5. Like, we were the first PlayStation 5 game maker game. Like, they're clearly interested in, in staying on modern consoles. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of like there was a time when it seemed like it was going to be future proof. And a lot of my, like, every, all of my closest friends are people who I met through game maker communities back, yeah, when I was like 13 or 14, or whatever. Um, and a lot of them left uh, when it seemed like Flash was getting really big and Game Maker didn't seem like it was going to be going forward for much longer. And I was like one of the very few people who just stayed on because I really didn't want to learn anything. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it paid off. <laughs> yeah. Actually. It's got to be so yeah. nice to yeah know that like tech so well at this point. But all right, walk us through uh, Chicory's launch for you. Does it feel like a night and day difference compared to Wander Song? Maybe just compare the two and what it feels like to be at the center of the hurricane here. Uh... Yeah, I mean, like it. Um, I mean, in terms of like how excited people are, Wander Song, like, like people loved that game a lot when it came out, and I think I feel a similar energy from Chicory. To be honest, yeah. So my expectation with Chicory was that, like, I was gonna get way like people would wouldn't like there, there wouldn't be those weird people who loved the game as much as they loved Wander Song, but there would be way more of them. And instead, it feels like we have way more people who all love the game a lot. <laughs> Um, which has been pretty, uh, pretty, pretty special, honestly. Um, but yeah, as far as like the scale of the launch and stuff, it is definitely like a big difference. Like Wander Song, the entire time, like like just everything about this this project coming from Wander Song was so different. Like when I was working on Wander Song, there were so many points where like like paying rent was a concern. Like I had to like you know be like oh like the sound designers like. I'm going to be a week late on this check because I'm waiting for something, you know, like, like that kind of stuff happened all the time. And like, there were, you know, probably a couple of times where I wasn't even sure if the game was ever going to be able to be finished because like funding stuff and like dealing with publishers and whatever, like it was just always, it was always, it was always felt like it was just, just on the brink. Uh, and then like, and then when it came out, the launch for Wander Song was like, people love that game, but it definitely was quieter. Like it was not until probably like a year afterward where it started, it actually seemed like, oh, well, actually, like we've, we're actually making money on this. Like, <laughs> and, and, and like, yeah, I'm going to be able to make more games and, and everything, right? Um, yeah. So working on Chicory, it was like the whole time there was never 
a problem like that. It was always like, I know this game will be done. Like we have runway to spend way more time on this game if we wanted to. Like, like you, know, it can work with almost anyone I want to. Like, uh, and and make sure. And I know like they're they're paid on time and everything. Like, yeah, that was great. And then yeah, the launch was like super like less stressful um we even had like we had time to qa test this game that was new for me so like (laughs) (laughs) uh like we had way more people playing this game and way fewer bugs reported than with wonder song and that's like uh, yeah this is like this is the first time in uh, in my memory that i can say a game launch actually went well Uh, (laughs) i can say that with confidence (laughs) yeah thank you yeah that's just like yeah it, it, it feels really different so i'm like i'm Definitely trying not to take for granted basically how lucky a lot of that stuff is. <laughs> oh, yeah. You mentioned uh, having the freedom to like make, you know, more games and like work with like whoever you want. Like, what do you, what's your vision for the future? Do you think it'd be like a new, I just keep trying out new IPs? <laughs> Would you continue with this? And then who, like, who's in your dream list of people to collab with? Well, I guess when I say like work with anyone I want to, it's more like, like we could bring in people to do stuff. Uh, so, like, on, on Wander Song, it was really like, if I wanted to do something, like, I had to do it. Like there was no space to bring in someone to help me with something. Right. On Chikri, it was like, oh man, this is really annoying issue. Like we have to add like fonts for other languages. And I could be like, oh, I'll just hire somebody to do that. Like <laughs> no big deal, you know? Uh, so that, that's more like, it's, it's not really about like, um, you know, well, yeah, it's not like, oh, I could bring in Shigeru Miyamoto to design <laughs> or something. Like <laughs> it's not like that. And if anything, yeah. So like, um, I know people who have worked uh, with larger scales than me and like with bigger budgets and stuff. And I think I, I have a, a, a decent enough understanding to know that I don't want to grow my team size actually that huge. Like it's, and it's not like I have like, uh, yeah, like superstars that I want to work with. It's really like, I want to be able to work with my friends and, and people who I think are really interesting, like a small team of people that I think are interesting and just makes up that is, is personal and, and fun for us and like fun to work on. And I can still get my hands dirty on the parts that I care about. Uh, kind of thing rather yeah. than like trying to like build like a big studio or anything um i think that's that, that's like my my goal i definitely want to keep making games and i have um idea parenthesis s and idea or ideas that i want to do um that i'm like really interested in that i can't really talk about yet but uh yeah definitely like i want to keep making um games kind of in the same way that i've been doing because i think this is working really well for me now <laughs> that's i mean that's such an unbelievably lucky spot to be in as a game developer to be like oh it's getting easier and easier as i go along here and i'm seeing more and more success i mean you're at an amazing moment right now where i'd imagine with the success of chicory and especially honestly like at the end of this year you're probably gonna get another huge boost because i think it's going to be on so many best of lists and stuff like that that mm. i don't want to say and jinx you by saying you're set up and you're in such a prime spot but like <laughs> I bet a lot of surprising doors will be opening to you in the game industry from this thing. That would be cool. (laughs) Yeah. Well, okay. It really, it felt like that was, it's like funny because it, I felt like that actually did happen with Wander Song. Like, even though like, you know, it didn't show up on best of list. It didn't like exactly win awards, but it was one of those games where like, like even though like not, not everyone was buying it, but people who were reviewing games or running platforms, like they heard about it. Everyone knew that Wander Song was good. So that like when, like I announced Chicory, just suddenly there was like all these like doors just suddenly flew open. Everyone was like, "Oh yes, of course." Yeah. Person made Wander Song. Yes, of course I'll cover your game. I didn't cover Wander Song, but like, <laughs> like, like these these so many things like like happened that hadn't happened before. So it felt like there was like all of this like I don't know like groundwork or like I don't know what that is, but yeah, it, it felt different um, already. So yeah, yeah. How are you dealing with the? positive feedback i mean i know it's very easy to play the game and to read too much into the text and the writing of the game and be like oh these are all your feelings but the game deals with imposter syndrome deals with kind of you know the emotions of a creator and i'm just curious like what's your perception is now that you put that piece of work out into the world and everybody said two thumbs up great work artist (laughs) uh i definitely feel like i'm thinking a lot about how i wish it was better still (laughs) yeah uh uh like yeah, I mean, it's it's um, how do I? There's 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 a lot to unpack there, I guess. Like there are there are a lot of personal like like you know things that are personal to me that are put into this game, but there also are a lot of things that like like this. It's it's not just me who's in this game, basically. Like I don't I don't feel like I'm on the examination table like emotionally. A lot of the time when people are talking about the game, I feel like a lot of it like 
it's a conversation that I can kind of have with someone else. And this game is like that conversation. It's not like, it's not me. It's, it's like this thing that we, we share, like a thing that's common between us. So there right. are things obviously that I relate to, but there are a lot of things in there that are not me that I know that, that are, that are, that, that are honest, like for other people, I guess, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like scary in that way. It feels like a thing that I have externalized that I can talk about and that I can also see flaws in. Like someone can be like, you know, I think that part wasn't the best. And I'm like, you're right, you know? <laughs> I, I wish I'd done better there, and uh, next time I'll try harder, you know? Um, yeah. I feel a bit of that. Uh, it, it is, like, yeah, honestly, I, I am I am surprised at how strong Reaction was, because, like I mentioned, like, I guess coming from, like, Wandersong, if I can compare, like, Wandersong was a game where, like, it's all story, it's all heart, and if you don't care about the story, then, like, you don't like Wandersong. Like, right. there's just no reason right. to like that game. Chicory was totally, like, I think that this is actually a solid Zelda game, and like, like this is what I thought the reaction would be is like, oh, it's a solid, fun Zelda game. Oh, and the story's pretty good too. Yeah, the story's pretty good. But anyways, like this puzzle, whatever, right? Like people would yep. like it wouldn't be the thing that people cared about. Where instead it feels like it was like a multiplicative thing where people were like, like the story ended up being the thing that made people actually fall in love with the game and like what actually makes it like a bigger thing to them. But I just expected that it would be overshadowed because like in in Wander Song, like I made a lot of um, intentional compromises like to the game where I was like, you know, I don't, I think this will play worse, but it's going to make people feel a certain way. That's going to make the story work better. And like, I want to have that moment in the game. Like I want this to be the game where I make those kind of sacrifices. Chicory was definitely a game where it was like, there were definitely times where it's like, no, I want to make a really cool game. And the story is going to like, try to kind of go along for the ride with it. Right. There are things and there, there are things where the story had to do a certain thing and the game had to compromise, but like not like Wander Song, there are times where the story had to compromise for the game to work somewhere, and I like that was different. And I just expected that, that that would mean that people wouldn't like get jive with the story as much. But instead, it's like, yeah, I think what I'm learning is that like gameplay really does a lot for people's perception of everything else. <laughs> so like, even when the story isn't like the number one thing in your face right now, like people are still getting that from the game. Um, which yeah, is cool. I, I think it's really interesting. Yeah. Like just Janet, I don't know if you had this reaction too, but like listening to other people on other podcasts talk about chicory, it's a lot of talk about like, oh, it's really cute and you can draw <laughs> and you design things for other characters and you're like these cute little animals. And so I think it's easy to focus on that. And maybe that's just because people are focused on the opening, but I hear very few people explain it the way you just explained it, which is perfect. Of like, it's a, it's a Zelda game with a lot of customization. <laughs> it's, it's a Link's Awakening if you like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, Janet? Yeah, I feel like it's like so many different genres. Like, yeah. you know, uh, I saw so many different of my favorite games and like, I don't want to name too many of them for mechanical spoilers because like <laughs> I was con I was almost constantly surprised by like the abilities you got. Maybe they were mm -hmm. meant to be obvious. But um, yeah, I just it just kept like when I thought I knew what the game was, like just more and more layers revealed themselves, which I think is like the measure of something really special because I just was constantly <laughs> delighted and surprised. Uh, and I, I absolutely adored the game. But I am curious to know, you mentioned that, you know, there all you're kind of thinking about is like ways you could have made it better. And you mentioned, you know, I've heard some criticisms and like, yeah, like that's fair. What's a criticism you heard where you're like, yeah, I agree with it. And then what's a praise you heard where you were sort of surprised that people were drawn to like an aspect that maybe you thought was a little bit on the weaker end. Mm, criticisms I heard that I agreed with. Uh, so, well, okay. Like i like, I think something that comes up regularly, like the, the boss fights, not being people's favorite parts. Um, and like, I, there are like, things i i yeah i guess the more, once i the more i understand about what people's actual experience with them was the more like when you're working on it things seemed really good and then once you actually like yeah it's just hard to tell sometimes because totally. even play testers like like a lot of people their favorite parts were the boss fights that's actually probably still true mm. for all the players who actually played the game um but so I, i'm afraid i'm almost afraid of saying too much because i almost like don't want to poison like it's like if someone really likes the game <laughs> i don't want to like tell them why they're wrong you know because <laughs> yeah yeah but like like in some ways I wish that I had, we had been more creative uh, like with how we handled basically some things. Like I think boss fights were a really good idea in a lot of ways. Um, but they're like, like could, could we have done something more creative that like fit better with the themes of the game? Maybe like, I don't know what that is right now, but mm -hmm. like, you know, if, like I, I, I like there's, there's some, there's some feeling there like, Oh, like maybe I didn't think through enough or, or have a good enough idea there. Um, not everyone like, this is this is way more ephemeral, but I, I like like there are a lot of people who like play part like only play some to some part of the game, 
and they have a feeling, oh, the story is going a certain like because it's dealing with a really um, personal subject, like with like anxiety and characters' depression and stuff. It's really easy for people to get a takeaway from it that is not what we intend, or you know, they they play a part of the story and they think like, oh, like this character is the bad guy because they're depressed or something. Um, that that kind of thing, like that kind of read, like it. It's it's hard to avoid when you're when you're doing stuff like this because I know it is really personal, but it's also just something where like. I don't even know if that's a thing we could address. It's like, it's tough because you, especially because you're uh, working like in, in the structure of a game, like there's certain, you know, like there's just things with pacing that like, you know, I can't just sit here and give you text forever, right? Like I have to yeah. give you game, like the story has to move forward. And like, there's just parts of me that like, like feel like, ah, oh, like it's just too bad, I guess, that people don't always get the thing we want from it. And I wish that like there was space to do that better or to, to give everyone like to actually like explain, you know, the people the, the way we want it to feel. I don't know. This it's it's like really fiddly. It's like really weird little fiddly stuff like that. That's hard to. I don't quite have a pin on yet. Um, and 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 no, I guess that probably covers it. <laughs> there's a lot of this. Like it gets into weirder and smaller things. Just like feeling could have been better. This could have been better. Kind of stuff. Um, praise that I was surprised by. Uh, I I think I think honestly I was I was honestly surprised at how much people connected with the 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 characters in the game because like so i like obviously i i i do creative stuff uh as a as a career and so like this stuff is really like this is like the, the conversations in this game the stuff this game is about it's really like really like me talking about like my my life and my job and how i see the things that i do um and i just didn't expect that to resonate so strongly with so many people and i think that's partially why i didn't expect the you know, like the people that have, you know, that, that strong personal connection to it because Wander Song is a game that's like super global and it's about stuff that feel like just like just even in summary feels so much more general. Like it's about optimism and like, you know, like trying to bring together community and stuff. And this game is like literally like you are an artist making art. And I just like I know that there are a lot of people who do that stuff, but I was I guess surprised the extent that it feels like so many people have like a leg or like into that into that world and that story and a an angle that it makes sense to them. And so when people praise the game's conversation of that stuff, uh, like it, it, it did surprise me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm trying to. Most of my PS5 is screenshots of dialogue at this point, where I'm like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with this because it's kind of spoilery anyway, so I don't think I want to post them. But I'm not joking. I have like dozens of like, I'm like, that's good. I even like did the 15 second record to go back and later get the dialogue screenshots. Yeah, it was that's fantastic. Awesome. And you think that's just great. like as a creator, Janet, you think it just strikes a chord with a lot of people who are dabbling in that space these days? Yeah, I mean, I had so many like fr- like people like message me and talk about like, oh, like I want to know what you think. And then, you know, they're saying that they resonated with it or talking about, um, you know, without giving too much away, like how the themes ended up speaking to them and what they feel like their role and their craft is. And then, I mean, it was just it, it just hit so many of the times. And like there were so many things that were just highly relatable in a way that managed to not also be like too on the nose, because I've, I've definitely you know, had those moments in games too, where it's like very direct and I'm like, okay, I get it. You're against right. capitalism. But here it's like it's so much more <laughs> subtle or explored that it feels, it does feel like, you know, a conversation with peers more than a game trying to give me a specific message. Yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, I was really struck by just what Chicory says about the evolution of game design, which is maybe too big of an umbrella for this, but just like the small things of just like your health during a boss fight it's not really going to be an issue. Like, yeah, we'll reset you maybe a little bit, but don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some puzzles. If you get stuck here, you can call your parents and you have the option of them basically just telling you exactly what to do. Except for one time, which I really loved, the dad trying to explain at some point the answer to a puzzle. And he goes, you know what? It's complicated to explain. Just go look it up on the internet. Because <laughs> it's like one screen to the left, two up, and then you go over here. It, it, just forget about it. But I'm just curious about your thinking about just what is necessary in a game these days you know it's like well you don't really need the challenge of a boss fight you don't really need these deep puzzles like give people the option to keep progressing and there's no downside to it i think it's incredibly smart uh thank you yeah i think the the um like the philosophy that is in the middle of all those things is basically at least for this game it's like we my intention was to make something with as little friction as possible right and that's definitely not the intention of every game out there and lots of games are really good because they have so much friction um and that's that's like yeah so that's also a super valid great way to make a game but this was a game where i guess like 
I, I I hate making games. I hate watching people play games when they have friction in them. And I've made those kinds of games before lots of times. Um, it's just really frustrating as a designer when, you know, like someone's dying over again, they're getting frustrated. And like frustration is even like, uh, yeah, it's like a feeling that I think some people play games to, to feel. Um, but I don't like giving it to people. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I guess it was it was just a, a question of like, yeah, like just try and, and some like in some in a certain light, I almost feel like I backed away from a fight because it's like, like games can be really cathartic when they put you through frustration. They really make you kind of like hate yourself and then you get through it and you're like, yes, you know, like you conquer the thing. Um, that's great. Uh, my, like my close friends made like Celeste and it's a game that's like exactly about that, you right. know? And like, that's great. And I find that so, that's such a scary, that is a designer, a very scary thing to get into because like when you when you give players those experience, it's like you're, uh, like you're, you're, you're kind of making a promise or like you're, you're building up an expectation or a promise, right? Where like, I'm going to treat you like shit and you're going to feel good at the end of it. Right. Like that's the promise that you're basically giving them. Right. Um, and like, but to actually fulfill that promise is really hard. And I would say probably most games that do that don't actually fulfill on that promise. So you just feel like shit at the end. Um, <laughs> So, like, I would say, like, like for me, partially it was just, like, rather than trying, to, you know, to, to give you this, you know, like, make you feel like shit and then promise you're going to feel good at the end, I just want to, like, make something that, like, I can promise that you're going to feel good while you play this game. That's a promise I can make, and I know how to deliver on, uh, and, like, and everything was kind of built around basically trying to support that idea. And I think, like, this is, this kind of connects to the... Um, the trend right now of like wholesome games, yeah, uh, <laughs> which we get we get lopped into a lot. And I don't I don't really feel that like that word really describes like everything that's in this game very accurately. But I think that what that actually like the reason why that term exists, the reason why there's an audience for that stuff is because there's a lot of people right now who actually want to play games that are like frictionless like that, right? They don't actually want to get stuck and not be able to finish the game because they they're playing it not they're not playing it for that part of the experience they're playing it to know what's going to happen next or to experience a world or meet these characters or you know engage with a theme and like i think the less the game actually kind of puts obstacles in your way like the like um you know the less you're like you're thinking about like how to push this block or how to jump this gap or whatever the more space there is in your brain to engage with like you know, oh, what do I think about art? Like, <laughs> like it's really interesting what that character said about like the history of art and or like colors or whatever. Like, right. you know, like you're 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 engaging at a different level that um, is probably more like where I want to engage players with. Um, so that's that's why we do things that way. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it was really exciting. God, was it Summer Game Fest? I think where uh, Shio Yoshida came on screen and then showed off Chicory. Like, it's <laughs> amazing to have like the support of playstation uh, what has that process been like for you so far uh pretty like shocking to yeah i mean like so we signed with um finji as a publisher like early last year and uh like so <laughs> I, I didn't actually deal like directly with sony and the way a lot of these things would come to us would just be like sony says that they want to sign you as an exclusive playstation game which was like mind-blowing <laughs> uh, again coming from wonder song we're just like stuff like that would never even happen but it's right. like oh brand new console and they want you to be like their like 2d indie you know like face of the console like exclusive thing like that was crazy uh and like uh, uh, um uh to be honest okay so i didn't actually know who even who shuhei was until this year like what i'm really embarrassed i'm That's really forgiven. sorry because i like but you know, they were like, oh, like, Shui <laughs> yeah. Yoshida is like a really big fan of your game. And I was like, okay, cool. Is that like someone at Sony or something? And, like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I like, did a Google search and I was like, oh my God, like this is a big deal. Um, and like, yeah, the extent to which he loved our game was like, like I don't know. I, I, my, my heart like was cracked in half like multiple times. Like when he, he said like his whole Twitter page to be like all chicory brand and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if you saw that. that was really sweet. Yeah. Uh, yeah like it's like irrespective of who he is and like his stature in the industry and stuff um like separate from that just just for somebody to like really invest so much in, in our game like i i you know i i like it, i guess this is a very chickery thing but it was like you know i was like <laughs> like i know you you know it's literally just like five of us making like a 2d like game maker game you know like <laughs> in my house like <laughs> you know like it's, it's not like just some ratchet and clank stuff you know like, <laughs> like you don't have to you know like take it that seriously shuhei or like you know it's just an indie game um <laughs> but that's a yeah, lifestyle yeah 
Um, so yeah, there definitely, definitely some like, I don't know, tension or, or, or friction there of just like that, that like feeling of like, wow, like people are really taking, like, this is really going places and then people are really, yeah, the, yeah, it, 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 I, I still haven't totally wrapped my head around, I guess, like how much like <laughs> big stuff there is out there for our, what feels still to me like very little and, and personal game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think it's interesting Like in, you know, the last couple of weeks, there's been some stories about, uh, PlayStation could be courting indies better have they lost some of their indie charm and then it's like well if you're if you're in the fence it's very good but the challenge is getting in that fence yeah yeah absolutely like i feel really lucky to be on on this side like i've been i've been i've been on the other side of it too i know how that felt the yeah part of what gives me that like i don't know like i guess i call it survivor's guild because i remember how much it sucked i remember like back when it was really hard to get on steam i didn't have games on steam and i was like like struggling in the green light system like wondering like how i could get valve's attention even publish a game on steam and how much that sucked and like (laughs) yeah Yeah. so like uh, yeah being being on this side of it like all i think about is just how hard it it is for you, you know the past me and and other people who are still living in that life and yeah wondering i guess like how how we can bridge the gap better. Um, <laughs> yeah. What do you, I mean, do you have any but, advice? What, what should people do if they're trying to get in the spotlight a little bit more? Um, I mean, like I, I, I honestly don't have great, like, like, like the reason, I think the reason why I am where I am right now is because we started early. Like I just spent years sucking at this and making <laughs> no money from games until like I met enough people and was around for long enough that eventually like, you know, just one door opens at a time, basically, right? Yeah. So that was my route. That's obviously not a route that's available to everybody. Uh, but that was that was that was my route. Um, so like, if I was starting from scratch right now and I was trying to get like, you know, how do you do that? I'm not totally sure. I mean, it seems like the only way that like I see like like little known games suddenly blowing up is when the concept like they have really good art and like a really cool concept that's basically like a really famous Nintendo game, but with a spin on it or something. And like that, that game will blow up easy headline. Uh, yeah. Like that seems like, yeah. Right. Like that seems like that's like the way that games get really big right now. So I guess do that. <laughs> but yeah, I got, I, it's, 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 it feels, it honestly feels random. It feels really random and it feels yeah. really hard. And um, like, like it, it's scary to me to imagine that. But I mean, on the other hand, I have to say it's probably easier to be a startup like indie game maker than it is to be a startup like indie movie maker right now or an indie musician or an indie comics artist. That's interesting. So like if, if you, if you have the, the time and patience to learn how to make games, you probably, you know, like you le- that is already a leg up on, on doing a lot of other different creative things today. So yeah, at least there's that. Cause I have friends in those industries too. And like, yeah, we talk about this a lot. <laughs> Indie books, like, oh my goodness. Like, Where do you start? Just, yeah. My yeah. God. Uh, well, hey, Chicory, A Colorful Tale. I don't want to freak you out, Greg. It's Janet's game of the year right now. Yes, it is. It is indeed wow. over Bravely Default 2. Wow. There's no uh, easy feat. But yeah, I, I absolutely adore it. Um, and, you know, I'm definitely not alone in that. You talked already about the, the Phantom It's hat. I saw there's that account that's at Play Chicory that someone made that just lists yeah. reasons to play the games. I know you follow it because I see you on the yeah. list. And I just think that's so wholesome. I'm like, this is my secret alt account. It's not literally, but it totally would be because I am a self-proclaimed Chicory stan. Um, too, because I know, you know, we're going to wrap up. I have to know, uh, though, Greg, what is your favorite brush in the game? Mm. Oh, uh my favorite brush in the game. So I want to, yeah, I mean, it's a boring answer, but I really like the halftone ones to be honest. There's probably, there's the, we yeah, one of the, one of the ones that has lots of dots in it. I like that one because if you overlay them, then you can kind of, it feels like you have kind of like semi transparency and that feels really cool. Uh, <laughs> those are probably my favorites. Um, but the spray pan, the spray can is actually really good too. That one's actually like a surprisingly good way to just like make drawings look like they have texture. Uh, like <laughs> just doing a quick pass of, of spray can over stuff. Um, I like that stuff quite a bit myself. Uh, yeah. I feel like I feel like I have a whole <laughs> <Boring> world. <answer. laughs> no, I feel like I have a whole that world to unpack here because like I just finished the game literally like an hour before we started uh, the podcast here today. Loved it. Wow. But now I feel like okay, now it's game on. Now I can go check out all the fan art because I'm sure that Reddit is just blowing up with like the most amazing paintings. Conceivable. Yeah, if you if you browse our, our Steam, if you go to like the Steam page and go to the Steam community yeah. thing and scroll there, oh my god, like there's so much good stuff there. That's where I've seen a lot. I okay. haven't seen Reddit yet. Okay, cool. I got to check it out. Uh, well, Greg, uh, congratulations, man. Really, uh, hats off uh, for a tough two and a half years. Congratulations <laughs> to you and the team. Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, 
yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's out on Steam, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and is there, what can you reveal? Is there a window of exclusivity, or it's just, it is exclusive to PlayStation right now, winky winky? Uh, what is the, what is the official line? It's like, yeah, I think, I think we have nothing to announce at this time, I think is what I'm supposed to say. Okay. So that's what I say. <laughs> All right, message received. Uh, Greg, thank you so much for joining us, man. You're welcome back whenever you want. Awesome. Thanks very much. It was great talking to you. If you are sick of snark, clickbait, and an avalanche of movie news, you can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax's YouTube channel here or checking out the benefits over on Patreon. It's a nice, clean handshake. You support us, and we won't make dumb, condescending stuff for you. Your support helps us continue our mission of focusing on games, friends, and getting better. Patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. We'd appreciate it.